Hi there. Most people would recognize the sugar maple leaf. They put it on maple syrup bottles, it's on the Canadian flag, and it's a pretty recognizable shape. But what is more difficult to recognize is the difference between a maple tree and other types of tree in the forest when you don't have the leaf to go by. So for in instance, in the winter, like where we are right now in the seasons, and it's also difficult to tell one type of, of maple tree from different types of maple tree. So for instance, a sugar maple tree from something like a silver maple or a red maple maple tree. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. First we're going to go through how you can determine whether a tree is a maple tree or a different type of tree and then we're going to dig deeper into that and look at is it a silver maple, red maple, or sugar maple. And so before we jump into the rest of that in this video, I just need to ask you to do one thing for me. Just hit the like button. All you have to do is turn the thumbs up button blue and that helps our channel out a ton. So thanks in advance for doing that. With that, let's jump into the rest of the video. So to distinguish a maple tree from the other types of tree in the forest, there are a few steps that you need to take. And the first one very quickly narrows down your field of options because there are many, many, many different species of tree. But there are only five different species of tree in the, the Midwest or Northeastern America region where I am that has opposite branching uh, in the trees. So there's basically two main types of branching and, and branching I'm just talking about like the way in which the twigs and, and the branches grow off of one another. So there is the opposite category which maple is in where the twigs grow off branches completely opposite to one another. And then the other, the, the alternative is alternate branching, which means they don't grow exactly opposite to one another, but instead they sort of grow in a step-by-step -step alternating pattern along the branch. And so if you can identify whether a tree has opposite branching or alternate branching, then you very quickly narrow down the field. So once you kind of know that you're looking at opposite branching trees, you really just have five species of trees that you need to distinguish between in order to identify a maple. One note though before we move on about opposite branching is oftentimes the twigs and branches on a tree, they will break off or something will happen. Um, and so it'll sometimes look like an opposite branching tree is an alternate branching when it actually is opposite branching. And so the thing you need to look for to make sure you don't make this mistake is if you find a branch and it, it looks like maybe it's alternate, take a closer look and look directly across from one of the twigs and if you see a little scar there then you can tell, you can usually tell if there was another twig that was growing off opposite to it before. So that's just one thing to check for just to kind of make sure and confirm that what you're looking at is opposite branching rather than alternate branching. So with that let's talk about the five different types of opposite branching trees in this area. There's a little mnemonic that you can use to remember the five different species of uh, opposite branching trees that grow in this area and I, I learned this from my dad and it goes like this. Boxer dogs, bucks, maples, and ashes. Okay? And so if you can use that to kind of help you remember, that will help you identify these when you're out and about. So boxer, dogs, bucks, maples, and ashes. Let's start and go in that order and talk about how you can distinguish that type of tree from the others. And using this information, you'll be able to kind of use the process of elimination to figure out if you're looking at a maple tree or, or one of these other species of tree. So first, boxers. That stands for box elder. So box elder is technically in the maple family and you actually can tap it and make maple syrup out of it. I've never tried that myself, but I've heard that you can. And uh, boxer, the thing that you look for with that for box elder is they have green twigs, green or purplish twigs, and they have white buds. And that's pretty distinctive. And so if you find a tree that has green or maybe a little bit purplish twigs and it has a white bud on the end, then very good chance you're looking at a box elder tree. Number two is dogs, and that stands for dogwood. And now the thing you want to look for with dogwood is uh, again relating to the buds. So you got to go find a, a bud on a dog on, on the tree you're looking at. And if it is a dogwood tree, it will only have one pair of scales in the bud. And so if you look very closely at the bud, you can kind of tell it looks like it's growing in scales, sort of like fish scales. And if it's a, a maple tree, it's usually going to have uh, several scales. It's going to have quite a few scales, whereas with dogwood, it's just going to have a one pair. The third one is buckeye. And so a buckeye tree, there's a couple things you can look for. Uh, the, the bark of a buckeye tree tends to be rather light colored and it almost kind of looks like there's, uh, it, it kind of looks like there's like lichens growing on it. And uh, for a buckeye tree, if you look at the, um, 
the bark that can help, but I think the easiest way to tell a buckeye tree from these other types of opposite branching trees is if you break off a twig and you smell it, it smells like skunk. <laughs> like, like very much like skunk. It smells really bad. And so if you kind of just do that test, it's gonna make it pretty easy. You should recognize it right away from that smell. And so that's, I think, the easiest way to tell the buckeye from these other types of trees. Now the fourth one is of course the one we're looking for, which is maple. And so with a maple tree, I think the, uh, there's a couple things you can look for, but because the different types of maple tree uh, can vary a bit, I think probably the easiest thing for you to look for is again going to the bud. So the bud of a maple tree is gonna look one of two ways if we're talking about these maple species that we're considering here, which is silver, red, and sugar. It's either gonna be brown and pointy, or it's gonna be red and sort of like ball shaped, okay? So that's one thing you can look for. And uh, I actually have maple trees here behind me. If you look at the bark of a maple tree, um, it, for, for a sugar maple, it tends to be sort of a darker color, but for like silver and red, it tends to be sort of like a lighter silver color. Um, the bark, I think, is a little bit harder to tell, so I, again, would suggest going by the bud. And so for that, you're either looking for a, uh, a bud that is um, brown and pointy, or red and sort of ball-shaped, and it will have multiple scales, right, which is different than the dogwood, which only has one pair of scales. So that's what you can look for there. And then that brings us to number five, which is ash. So ash, you can distinguish from maple in, in a couple of ways. Um, one, the bud is different. The bud on ash trees tends to uh, look kind of smaller or less pronounced than on these maple trees. And another thing you can look for with ash is if you compare the bark of an ash tree to the bark of a maple tree, the ash tree bark tends to be um, more ridged. So like the, the, the like valleys, if you will, the valleys and the cliffs of the bark tend to be more pronounced and, and bigger. And it can also grow in sort of like a diamond shape to some extent. And so that's something that you can, you can look for as well. Okay, with that information we just covered, you should be able to tell a maple tree from the other types of trees that have opposite branches. And so now at this point, hopefully you have a sense of whether what you're looking at is a maple tree or something else. So now let's distinguish between one type of maple tree and the others, okay? And so there's a couple things you can look for. And, and like I said earlier, we're mainly focusing on silver maple, red maple, and sugar maple, which are the most common in my area here. And uh, so to distinguish between these different types, let's first group red and silver maple together and distinguish those from sugar maple. Red and silver maple are both soft maple trees, as a side note, and sugar maple is a hard maple. For silver and red maple, you're going to have buds that are round and, and what is called, uh, it, it's, it's red and it's round, which is also called blunt. And so basically it looks like little red balls on the buds. And so the easiest way to distinguish it from sugar maple, I think, again, is by the bud. So try to get the buds if you can for, for a tree that you're looking to identify. And then if you compare that to sugar maple, it's very, very different. So a sugar maple bud is brown and pointy and uh, like it's, it's completely different than the silver and, and red maple, which um, of course are, are like red balls. So it's, it's very easy to tell those two apart when you have both of the buds side by side. Another thing you can look for is the bark color. So if you're looking at a couple different types of trees and you're trying to figure out which is which, a sugar maple tree will tend to have darker bark, whereas a red maple will have like the lightest bark, and silver maple is sort of in the middle. Um, it's still kind of lighter than sugar maple, but probably a little bit darker than red maple. And so that's another thing you can look for. And then one more thing that you can look for is uh, the, the height of the tree. So red maple trees tend to be smaller than silver or sugar maple. And so that's another thing that separates these three. And then actually I'll throw in one more. One more thing you can look for is where they are growing. So sugar maple tend to grow better in drier soil, whereas silver maple tends to grow better in uh, like wet soil. And so there's, there's a river close by where I am. If I go down by the river, then it's easier for me to find silver maple trees. Whereas if I'm up on sort of like the, the, the high land, if you will, where it's not as wet and it's more dry soil, then I'm gonna be more likely to find a sugar maple. And so that's a, a way you can tell sugar maple from silver maple, and then the size is a way you can tell the sugar and silver from the red. And so you can kind of use these different attributes to separate the different types of maple tree. And when you put them collectively together, they should give you a pretty strong signal of which type of maple tree 
you are looking at. But when in doubt, if you're trying to specifically identify sugar maple, go by the bud. That's the easiest way to tell. This year I'm trying something new that I haven't actually done before, and I'm gonna try to make small batch maple syrup. And when I say small batch, I really wanna try to do it in a way where I don't need a lot of like special equipment, like a big boiler, and I can just use mainly a few odds and ends and things that I already have around the house. So I'm gonna try to actually make maple syrup in a crock pot, and see if I can get that to work. And I'm also gonna try to make maple syrup in an instant pot. I just got one of those recently, and so I'm gonna try that out. And so if you wanna kinda of follow along with this, I'm gonna do a bit of a series on making your own small batch maple syrup at home and so if you want to try it out with me and kind of follow along I encourage you to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of those videos and again I'll just remind you to hit that like button for us and we'll see you back here in the next video thanks everyone bye